I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be setting dates and going with the flow. Got an email here from a viewer. He says, hey, Corey, I've read your book a few times, and you mentioned to only contact a girl you're dating once a week for the first two months. This makes sense, and I even saw your video a while back that explains what to do when she reaches out in between dates. My question is, if you go out with a girl early in the week, say on a Sunday or a Monday, and she texts you the next day, do you try to set a date for the following week? Well, here's, here's the deal. Women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. And anything that you do, you want to help you appear and remain as being mysterious. Now, if you set a week a date for like a week out in advance, say, say she call you go out just like you said here on a mon say you go out on a Monday night and then she texts you Tuesday telling you what a great time she had. Then you, then you can simply text back, hey, I had a great time too. I'd love to see you again. When are you free to get together? Because she's reaching out because obviously she did a great job on your previous date of raising her interest and she likes you. And so she's reaching out in hopes that you'll create the next fun filled romantic opportunity for sex to happen. And so you can do it later in the week. I mean, it really depends on what your schedule is. I mean, I've always been a guy who's been a busy professional. I have a lot of things going on in my life. So it's very rare that a girl will call and, and say, hey, when are you free to get together? And I got nothing else going on. So sometimes that might not be until the following week. Or when I've dated women that have kids, you know, they've got to get a babysitter and things got to get set up ahead of time. So at the end of the day, if you set the date up for the following week, that's going to help you remain mysterious because if you got a definite date and she likes you and she wants to see you but now she's got to wait another four or five days to see you, think about it. She's going to be thinking about you in between that time and since you set a definite date, you got no reason to talk to her in the meantime and so when you actually go and meet up with her or pick her up for the date depending on how, how you've got things arranged, she's going to like you even more and that's the idea because women fall in love slowly over time and us guys tend to want to rush through things because we're masculine energy is all about purpose, drive, mission, succeeding, accomplishing things. And so we feel like we've got to make something happen. But the thing is, is like with us guys, we, we see a woman, we find her physically attractive, we're in. But with a woman, it takes time. They fall in love slowly over time. Women want, they want to be in a love story. And love stories don't aren't like instantaneous. I mean, yeah, you can have instant attraction. You meet, you get together, and you have this great, amazing time, great, amazing sex, and then you don't see each other for a few days, or maybe you're on a business trip or whatever. And so in between that time that you see each other, she's going to be wondering about you and thinking about you, and that's what you want to do. You want to facilitate that. So at the end of the day, I mean, if you were available on a Thursday night, then, and she had called you, you went out Monday night, she calls you on a Tuesday, and you say, hey, when are you free to get together? And she says... I'm open pretty much any evening. And when a woman says that to you, that means, hey, I really like you. And basically, I'm going to clear my schedule for you. That's a sign of high interest. That's what you want to do. But you don't want to start going out with her four or five times a week when you just met her the week before. Because what will happen, she'll, she, what, what will usually happen is she'll really be into you for the first two or three times you get together. And then after the fourth or fifth day, because you've seen each other every day, it's too much too soon. And it starts to feel like a relationship when she just met you and she really hasn't had the time to form that emotional bond. And so if you go out with her on a Monday, she calls you on a Tuesday, I'd say a Thursday is a great way to set, a, is plenty of time to set a, the second date up because again, she's chasing you. She's reaching out to you. She wants you. And the reason she's calling you is she's trying to make it easy for you to get together again. And so you can do it Thursday or you can do it the following week. It really depends upon your schedule. But ideally, like, you don't really want to go out more than twice a week, especially in the first two to three weeks. But if the higher a woman's level of interest is in you to start out with, the quicker she's going to get to that point. Obviously, the lower it is, then what's going to happen, if you say go the girl and her interest is like 60%, then what's going to happen is you're probably not going to hear from her after, you know, until you, you might not hear from her at all until like the following week when you call her, because you're going to call her once a week to set a date, you probably won't hear from me, you usually if the girl starts out with low interest, like in the 60% range, more than likely she's not going to call you. And that won't actually start till the second or after the third date is happened. But if a woman's got 70, 80% interest from you, like the moment you meet and you go out and you have a great date, 
then she'll probably reach out to you a day or two within the time that you you last got together. So you really you'll notice the more times you go out with women and different women, you, you'll notice that some of them really are going to be into you more than others are going to be into you. So, like I said, you, you, it's really up to you and your schedule. And if she's reaching out to you, she's pursuing you. And at the end of the day, if she's chasing you, she's not going to be dumping you and, and blowing you off. So you really got to kind of take it on a case-by-case a, a -case basis. So if you, if you went out on a Monday and she calls you on a Tuesday, uh, arranging a Thursday date of that week, that means you'd be going out twice in one week. And that's okay because she's pursuing you. Now, if she hadn't pursued you and you're calling her for the second time, you try to go out twice in the same week, that's a little too much too soon, a little too easy too available. But like I said, when you've gone, when you use these techniques on, say, like a dozen different women, you'll see some of them will be more into you than others will be, and they'll get there, they'll get quicker to the point where you want them to be, which is they're starting to fall in love with you and starting to become emotionally attached much sooner. So the higher the interest that she's going to have to start out with, the quicker she's going to get there. So, and he also says here, he says, I can understand doing that if she contacts you at a later day in the week, but that's a long gap of time. But it's okay. If she really likes you, she's going to be cool with it. I mean, think about this. If you're busy as fuck and you've got a business that, that keeps you busy or your career is busy and you've got a lot of friends, you've got an active social life, you're, and you're dating lots of different women, your, your dance card is going to be pretty full and so you're not going to have time to do to do those things. And I know it seems a little unnatural, and it's like because it's like because what you're trying to do is you're trying to overcome these needy feelings, like trying to rush through things. And with women, less is always more. Taking your time and being patient will actually cause her to get to the point where she's impatient and she doesn't want to wait to see you soon. And that's the idea: is that you create that sexual tension and that anticipation in between the time that you see each other. And also by setting definite dates so you're not having to chit-chat on the phone because at the end of the day, the only way you're going to get her to fall for you is in person and not while you're talking over the phone because a lot of guys do that. They get caught up and the girl starts texting them a lot and then they start talking all the time but not seeing each other very much. And then like they get three or four weeks in and they're talking all the time but every time they try to set a date, she's busy, she's got this going on, she's got that going on. And now you've kind of trained her to expect the fact that you're going to return her text instantly or the moment that she reaches out to you. So the key is to be patient. So if you feel that urge, that tension, that pressure inside, like, oh, my God, i got to do something. i got to make something happen. Oh, my God, well, I don't want to wait five days. If you're feeling like that, then it means you're, you're pushing too hard and you're rushing too soon. And it's best to just take your time. Make a date the following week. I mean, if she's cool and she's got her shit together and she has a healthy self-esteem, She's going to be fine with waiting four or five days because she's going to be respectful of your time and just assume that you're really busy. And she's going to be grateful that she sees you. Plus, it's going to have the same kind of a effect that a baseball the baseball card analogy I use sometimes. Like if you look at what's the difference in the value of a, ba a Babe Ruth baseball card that's, say, 100 years old versus a Joe Rose baseball card. Well, the Babe Ruth baseball card is going to be very rare especially finding one that's rare and it's in good condition, it's going to be hard because they're obviously, you know, they stopped making those things 100 years ago, but like Joe Rose, or what, I mean, you look you look at, or I'm sorry, not Joe Rose, Pete Rose. When you look at Pete Rose, I mean, he's literally signed tens of thousands of baseball cards with his signature since he retired back in, in, the, in the 1980s. And so there's a lot of those out there in circulation. Since there's a lot of them out there in circulation, they're not really worth that much. And so you look at it that way. Less really is more. And so if she re starts to realize from the get-go that you're really busy, then when she calls you, she's going to expect that she's going to have to wait four or five days or maybe a week to see you the next time. And as you grow closer and closer over the weeks and months as you're dating, what happens is you start spending less and less time dating other girls that you were seeing and little less time with your friends and then you get to the point where you're pretty much together all the time but it's a gradual thing again the love story evolves slowly over time that's i mean think about how a movie is or your favorite tv show they don't give you all the details they all it's like a cliffhanger and you're always waiting to see what happens next that's why i like your weekly tv show that you watch you always have to tune in it's like right at the end of the show it's like getting really good and all of a sudden to be continued and then you got to wait till next week it has the same effect emotionally on a woman so think of it in terms of like that 
He says, my second question is, if you have a date set for the following week, what do you do if she contacts you the weekend before at night trying to meet up when you're both out and there's even a chance you may run into each other? Well, I always say that the best rule of thumb is that if some, if you're, you just met a girl and she texts you after 7 o'clock at night, especially on a weekend, you want to wonder, take your time, call her back the next day, the next morning. If you're out with your friends or your family or you're on another date, you're not going to be stopping what you're doing to text a girl you've only been out with once or twice. And I can tell here by the tone of your email is you're worried about something, her losing interest in you because you're just simply not that available. I know it's reverse psychology, but it actually works. Less really is more. It's the same analogy as a baseball card. If your time is very scarce and it's it's hard to get it's she's it's hard to get a hold of you, then she's always gonna be wondering, gee, what's he doing? What's he up to? Is this guy married? Does he have a girlfriend? What's he going on? What's what's going on in his life? And if she knows you're really popular with other women, and not that you rub it in her face, but your life and your lifestyle and your availability is such of a guy who just has got a lot going on, then she's going to perceive you as being more valuable than the other 10 guys that she met over the past couple of weeks, especially the more beautiful she is, the more choices she's going to tend to have. And so when she's got 10 messages from 10 different guys and she hasn't heard from you in a few days or she texts you, like she texts any of those other 10 guys and they'll instantly return her text. And when she texts you after 7 o'clock at night on the weekend or whatever and you don't get back to her, if you did Say you run into her and she's like, hey, where you been? Like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't have my phone on vibrate. I, I didn't know. Or we've been drinking too much. Hey, it's great to hear from you. Give her a hug. Give her a kiss. Hang out. Shoot the shit. And if you run into each other at the same place, that's all you can say. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't check my phone or my battery died or I didn't have it on. Or it, the music was really loud and, and I, you know, I couldn't text you. Or I, it was just, you know, I was a little drunk and I always found it's better you know when you had too much to drink or a little bit to drink you probably should wait till the next day so you don't say something stupid I mean, you can come up with a, a good reason a good excuse and then you can turn right around give her a quick quick excuse quick answer and then turn right around and ask her a question because if you're asking questions whoever is asking questions in a conversation is the person that's leading the conversation and so like i said it's like you're worried too much about losing this girl from backing off but the key is, is that that's why, I mean, if you're here, if you're following my work, it's obviously because people don't come to me because everything's going great in their life. It's usually because they're trying to improve in some area of their life or things aren't where they really want them to be. So take your time, be patient, date lots of different women when you're starting out with this stuff so you can kind of start to see the ebb and flow of how things go. Women who have higher interest in you to start out with are going to pursue you more when you, quicker. But women who start out like in a 60% range, it's going to take them several weeks to get to to get them to the point where they're in the in the 70 to 80 percent range. So if you have a question you want to ask me, go to my website, click the contact me tab on the left hand side of your screen, send me one to two paragraphs max, and just give me several weeks to get back to you with a response. If you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. If you want to get a digital version of my Kindle ebook on my website, underneath the email sign up box, is a box that has a link that will take you right to the Amazon Kindle download page for my book. Once you get there, if you don't have a Kindle device, just download one of their free e-reader apps for whatever electronic device you want to read my book on. And if you appreciate the value of the information I offer in these video newsletters, the articles on my website, or my ebook, you can show your appreciation right now by going to my website. And on the Wibia we'll toolbar at the bottom of your screen, click the PayPal donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information. And I will talk to you soon.